Much of the power of Photoshop comes from its filters. Inside the filters menu, we'll be able to select and edit these tools. This is by far the most involved menu that Photoshop has for us. There are 14 submenus inside the filters menu. Each item on these submenus is going to produce almost entirely different results. Let's start with the filter gallery option. You'll find this third from the top in the filter menu. Once you select the filter gallery, your image is going to open in a new window. On the right side of the window, there are six tabs, each one corresponding to one of the filter submenus. You can choose from artistic, brush strokes, distort, sketch, stylize, and texture. Also, if you open any one of these options from the filter menu directly, it will simply open up the filter gallery option. If you select any one of the categories, a visual reference will open showcasing each of the options available. The options are represented by a small thumbnail of a sailboat in the style that the filter will provide. This should give you a basic understanding of what to expect when you select the filter for your own image. Pick one of the presets here and then your image is instantly transformed using the default settings of the filter that you've chosen. To the far right of the screen are the settings adjustments. Click the sliders and begin moving them around until you get the look that you want. Once you're done, just hit the OK button to apply your settings to the main image. When you first start out with Photoshop, feel free to spend some time in this filter gallery playing with the settings. Remember that you won't be applying these settings to your image until you press the OK button. This window is nothing more than a preview, so you can get crazy with your experimentation. Once you're ready to move back to the main filter menu, you'll find that you've got a better understanding of six of these submenus just by looking at the thumbnails in the filter gallery. Next, we're going to look at the blur and sharpen options. These filters are used to control the overall sharpness of your image. If you want a softer image, use blur, and if you want a more crisp, clear image, use sharpen. Within these categories, there are several effects as well. You can simulate motion, lens filters, or even a lens blur. More often than not, you're going to find that with the blur and sharpen tools, as with most of these filters, the more subtle changes are going to be the most effective. We're going to be revisiting these filters several times in the more advanced classes. The render menu allows us to generate some interesting shapes and patterns with the fibers, clouds, and difference clouds options that we can then use as the basis for various effects in later work. We can also generate really basic lens flares, but quite frankly, there are other programs within Adobe's Creative Suite that will do a much better job of this. Also, the integration with Photoshop is extremely easy. The noise menu will allow us to generate noise patterns in our image, and Pixelate breaks our selection down into smaller pieces in various ways. The last tool that I want to point out before we move on here is the Liquify tool. This tool has some great uses, but one of my favorites has always been to melt clocks. That's all for now. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and if you have any questions, send them to requestsitmahalo.com. Thanks for watching.